Hi everyone and welcome to our video on the introduction to limits. Uh, and this limits are a very important concept uh, as we move forward. Uh, it is really the basis for what you will study in calculus. In fact, we're going to be looking, we'll look at some calculus uh, concepts uh, during this uh, unit as well. So our skill objectives for this particular video are number one, we want to use a table of values to estimate limits of functions numerically. Number two, we want to estimate limits of functions by inspecting graphs. And number three, we want to identify what characteristics are going to be true if a, when a limit does not exist. Conceptual objectives for this one. Number one, understand a limit of a function at a point may exist even though the function may not be defined at that point or points. Uh, number two, understand when the limit of a function fails to exist. And number three, understand the difference between a limit of a function and a one-sided limit of a function. First thing is to get an idea about what a limit is. So what is this limit? And to do that, we're going to look at this particular function here, y equals x cubed minus 5x squared plus 7x minus 3, that whole thing divided by x minus 3. Now, if you want to put that into your calculator to see this, you can just remember to put the parentheses around the numerator and denominator, otherwise you won't get the graph. The graph that you should get will look something like I have here, although you might not get this hole that exists uh, in this one. We know that there's a hole when I put uh, 3 in for x, this numerator and the denominator both will come out to be 0. So we do actually end up getting a hole there. Uh, and so, But graphically, we'll get this parabola here. Okay. Now, when I go through and I'm looking at the limit, what I'm really going to do, I want to go through and determine what happens as our x values get closer and closer to a specific number. The limit of a function is the y value that, my, that I keep getting closer and closer to as we move our x values closer and closer to a specific number. For example, let's look at this table right here. In this case, we wanna, we're going to look at what's happening as x moves closer and closer to 2. So you'll notice I have the table set up. I'm using 1.9, 1.99, 1.999. And in the other direction, I have 2.1, 2.01, 2.001. It's important that when you look at a limit that you look at both directions because it really has to be, kind to, in order for the limit to exist, you must be approaching that value from both directions. So when I look at this, I know that when I take 1.9 and put it into this function here, I get 0.81. And then when I put 1.99 into that function, I get 0.9801. And when I put 1.999 into that function, I get 0.998. Now, if you, you, when you look at this, what you really have to ask yourself is what's happening as, in this case, as x up here moves closer to 2, what's, hap what's true about the y values? What are they approaching? And then we look at it in the other direction as well. As I come, become closer to 2 here, uh, what's happening with those y values? So if you look at this one, and I have 2.1 in there, I get 1.21. 2.01, I get 1.0201. 2.001, I get 1.002. And so I look at this thing, and I say, well, yeah, as I come from the left... My y value, as I approach 2 from the left, my y values are getting closer and closer to 1. As I approach 2 from the right, my y values are also getting closer to 1. Let's take a look at the next one here, in this case at 3. Now remember, up here, when I look at this graph up here, at 2, we're defined. This function is defined at 2. It is not defined at 3, but that doesn't mean that we can't have a limit as we approach that. And as I take a look at this, I start out at 2.9, 2.99, 2.999. You'll see I get 3.61, 3.9601, As I come from the other direction, my values are getting closer. I have 4.41. 4.041, 4.004. So you can see in this case, as I'm moving closer and closer to 3 in this direction and in this direction, my function values are getting closer and closer to 4. 
So when I looked at the first one up there, my limit as I approach two was one. The limit as, I, as x approaches three of this particular function is four. So now let's kind of take a look at more of a working definition that we can use for a limit. Okay, uh, what in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to let A and L be real numbers. Okay, if the values of f of x become arbitrarily close to L as x gets sufficiently close to A, but not equal to A, that's, in, that's an important feature on this. It, it doesn't have to be equal to A. Then the limit of f of x as x approaches A is L. So what happens here in in these two graphs that you see here, I start as I come as I approach A in the first one, as I approach A from the left and from the right, where my function values are going to get closer and closer to L. The same thing is true here. Even though the function is not defined at A, as I come from the left, my function values are moving closer to L. As I come from the right, we're moving closer to L. So in both of these cases, the notation that you're going to see for this. This is going to say that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to L. One of the things that we're going to use as we're working with limits is really this idea of a one-sided limit. In other words, as I come from one direction, either the left or the right, are what function value am I approaching? So what we have in these, if I, let, I have two graphs here, I'll let this first graph here will be y equals f of x, and over here we'll have this one be y equals g of x. So what happens on this? When we talk about a one-sided limit, what we'll see, if I, want, if I look at the limit as x approaches a number, so in this case we have 2, if I'm looking at it from the left, it'll be a minus sign, that little negative sign. That is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. If I have the limit, this with x approaching 2, but now with a plus sign, that's the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So what happens on this, in these two graphs up here, we have some uh, information that we can look at. Now, in, when I look at this one, let's look at f of x first. Okay? I take the limit. If I want to know the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, what that means is I am coming from the left, moving right. So in this case, when I come from the left on this for f of x, as I come from the left, my function values are moving closer and closer to 3. Remember, I'm approaching 2, but not equal to 2. So as I keep getting closer and closer to 2, but not equal to 2, my function values are getting closer to 3. So I would say the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x is equal to 3. I can also take the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x. And when I do that, again, I'm coming from the right, moving left. So I'm coming like this. As I do this, as I keep getting closer and closer to 2 from the right, my function values are going towards 5. So I would say that the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x is equal to 5. Let's take a look at the next one, at g of x. So in this case, what I'm going to be looking at is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of g of x, and the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of g of x. Well, in this, on this problem, I start when I look at the first one, or I'm coming from the left, I'm coming from the left, moving right, my function values are getting closer and closer to 4. So I would say this is equal to 4. As I come from the right, my function values, that means I'm coming up on this piece right there, I'm getting closer and closer again to 4. So that would equal 4. Now, what we have with this, we have the limit as we come from the left, we have a limit when we come from the right. In order for the limit to the actual limit itself, notice I'm not saying from the left or from the right. In order for me to say that the limit exists, that the limit of the function is a value, 
it has both of these pieces, when I come from the left and from the right, have to be the same, going to the same number. So in this case right here for g of x, I can say that the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x is equal to 4. Well, if I look at the f of x, I would have to say, because as I come from the left and from the right, I approach different values, I would say the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x, in this case, does not exist. Now, there are going to be two different ways of going through and uh, estimating, coming up with an estimation for a limit. One is going to be uh, with a numerical estimation. And the way you do that is that's what you're good when you make a table of values, similar to what we saw in the beginning. So in this case, I want to know the limit as x approaches 2 of this particular function, x cubed minus 8 over x squared minus 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a table of values like we had earlier. I'm going to have an x here. I'm going to take this, go all the way across, and then I'll have a y. And remember what we had on this one is that we picked values that were close to 2 but not equal to 2. So when I come from the left, I'm going to use like 1.9, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99, 1.99. Notice what I'm getting closer and closer to 2 each time, but we're not actually getting there. Then I know 2 will be here. And that's the limit. That's what we're going to try to find. And then we're going to go from the other direction. We're going to come. We're going to approach two, but we'll start with like two point one, two point oh one, and then two point oh oh one. Now to do this, to make this table, I'm going to use my calculator, and I will show you the procedure in class uh, for making this work. Uh, but for right now, you can enter it in, and I'm going to use, I'm actually going to be using the table. And when I went through and uh, calculated these, when I did 1.9, or 1.9, the uh, value of the function came out to be 2.9256. Uh, At 1.99, I got 2.9925. And at 1.999, I got 2.9993. Now, at this point, you can look at that and say, oh, as I'm approaching 2 from the left, when I look at that, I could say the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of x cubed minus 8 over x squared minus 4, that appears to be equal to, as I keep moving closer and closer, it seems to be getting closer and closer to 3. So the next thing I have to do is take a look at the other direction. Well, when I use 2.1, I got 3.0756. When you use 2.01, you get 3.0075. And 2.001, I got 3.0008. So again, when I look at that, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of x cubed minus 8 over x squared minus 4 also appears to be equal to 3. And so in this case, for this particular problem, I would say that the limit as x approaches 2 of x cubed minus 8 over x squared minus 4, that appears to equal 3. The next thing we have are graphical limits. We're actually reading the limit from the graph. Now, we saw some of that earlier when I was looking at the one side of limits, but let's talk about some other things that can happen as well. One of the things that people often mistake, the mistake people make with limits, and you'll see, and it's a very logical mistake that it happens, is, when, is that people mistake uh, the limit with evaluating the function. Okay, so we got to go through and look at, I want to first look at that with these. In this case, I have this function here, y equals f of x, and I have three x values, a, b, and c, and then I have these are my function values. I just And I just made those numbers up. I hope you understand that. 
So when I look here, if I want to find f of a, now when I look at, uh, at a and I go down, I notice there's a hole. So in this case, f of a does not exist. There is no function value for, uh, for f of x when I plug a in. I get something that's undefined. If I look at f of b, f of b is here, it goes up, comes across, and I go through and I can see that f of b is equal to 2. f of c is a little bit trickier. You'll notice on f of c that I have two things. I have a hole here and then I have a dot. This dot represents the function value. So in this case, f of c is going to equal 6. At this point, you should be saying, okay, yes, I remember all this. We've been doing this for a while because you've been reading graphs like this for a little while, and so this should be okay. But now we're going to look at the limits. Let's start by looking at the limit as x approaches a. So again, remember what's happening here. When I look at the limit, I have to come from the left and from the right. Am I approaching the same value? So in this case, as I come from the left, I'm coming here. As I come from the right, I'm coming here. And so when I go through and I come in both like that, you'll notice that they will meet right here at this location where the hole is. And, I, and really the limit of this as x approaches a is just going to be the fact that as I come from the left and from the right, my values of the function are approaching negative 4. So in this case, I would say the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to negative 4. Notice, even though the function did not at a did not exist, the limit can still exist there. The next one is the limit as x approaches b of f of x. Well, as x approaches b, as I approach b from the left, my function values are getting closer to 2. As I approach b from the right, we're also getting closer to 2. So the limit as x approaches b of f of x is equal to 2. The last one's a little bit trickier. And it is the one that usually causes the most people the most trouble. But what you really have to look at, you have to remember the limit is the one number that my function values are approaching as x gets closer and closer to c, but not equal to c. So in this case, what is the one number? As I come from the left, what, is my, what are my function values approaching? Well, as I come from the left, my function values are approaching 5. As I come from the right, my function values are approaching 5. I just have this jump up here to 6 when I'm actually at c. So in this case, because my function values are approaching 5 as x approaches but is not equal to c, I would say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to 5. So notice on here, again, I can't stress this enough. Number one, just because a function doesn't exist at a particular x value, doesn't mean the limit can't exist. In this case, here's a at a, the, the function value did not exist, but the limit did. In this case at b, my function value and my limit were the same thing, but that does not necessarily have to happen. So in this case, f of c was 6, but the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to 5. One of the things that's probably the most helpful for people is really getting an understanding of what, what it means for a limit not to exist and what, what is going to be true about those. You've actually kind of seen it in a couple already, especially when we looked at the one side of the limits. Uh, first up, if a function has a jump or step, uh, what's called a jump or step discontinuity, where we come from the left and from the right, all of a sudden we make a big jump without any connection there. So that's going to be an issue where, in this case, the limit does not exist at x equals 2. The limit exists for all other points. If I wanted the limit over here at, let's say, that's 7, the limit does exist. It just doesn't exist at x equals 2. Another place where the limit won't exist is when, we have, when we're dealing with functions with oscillating behavior, where we're just continually bouncing back and forth between two values. An example of this is going to be the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of 1 over x. This is one that we will take a look at in class so that you can, so we can work with the calculator. You can really understand what's happening with that and how that analysis comes about. Another thing that we have is when we have unbounded behavior, i.e. a vertical asymptote. 
Vertical asymptotes, when we have vertical asymptotes, the limit does not exist at that particular value. So in this case right here, the limit, uh, the limit as x approaches 2, as x approaches 2 of f of x, in this case where x, x, f of x is 1 over x minus 2, that does not exist when we have that vertical asymptote, because we have that vertical asymptote there. This now does conclude my video on this first video that we have dealing with limits and giving you just the basic idea of it. Uh, most of what we're going to be doing today are in class is going to be dealing with the graphical and the numerical approaches to those. So, uh, and then what's going to happen next in the next section, next video, we'll deal with uh, how to evaluate limits and looking at some of the limit properties. So with that, I hope you are uh, having a good day and I will see you in our next class.